The information processing theory sees the individual as a processor of information, much like a computer. The same way a computer takes in information, processes information, stores information, retrieves information, and produces an output, the human brain also follows these same procedures. In the information processing theory, input is comparable to our sensory registry. We take in information through our five senses. Most commonly, through visual, and auditory stimulation. Our brain processes the information, then places it in storage for later retrieval. The memory is made up of three categories. Sensory memory, working or short-term memory, and long-term memory. The sensory memory lasts for a very short period of time, about as long as an individual is exposed to the sensory stimuli. Once stimuli are obtained, it either moves on to working memory or it is forgotten. Short-term memory has a limited storage capacity for a limited amount of time. What was I coming in here for? Connor! What was I coming in here to get? I don't know. Me either. On average, a person can store five to nine items for approximately 20 seconds. Okay. What is your name? Madison. And what grade are you in? Six. Okay. I'm going to give you a list of 10 random things. And when I finish, I want to see how many of those you can recall. You ready? Owl. Heart. Shoe. Nose, comb, snowman, eggs, brain, crown, ocean. Okay. Owl, heart, ocean, snowman, comb. One way to retain information longer in short term memory is through repetition. Practice makes perfect. Repetition. Oh! Most believe long-term memory has unlimited storage space. This allows us the ability to retrieve and build on past knowledge. The brain then channels information back and forth between long-term memory and working memory. At times, retrieval of general information is challenging. Who was the vice president of the United States? Oh. Uh. <laughs> um, I promise I didn't. Chiny? Chiny? Oh, he's saying that. Well, what is the capital of the U.S.? Is it a uh, Ben Franklin? He wasn't president. Never mind. How many 
51. What countries border the U.S.? Mexico and it's just Mexico. Canada's not a country, is it? Is it? I don't know. <laughs> Mexico. Uh, theories for why this happens. Retrieval failure through decay theory, interference theory, motivated forgetting, and failure to store. Environment, in addition to biology, Gardner argues, plays a role in the development of intelligences. This is also true in information processing. Everyone learns differently and different cultures and societies gauge knowledge differently. What is important in one culture may not be significant in another. Although environment plays a role in these processes, an individual can overcome their environmental influences. Primarily, you are responsible for you. In the classroom, educators need to realize everyone learns differently. Howard Gardner's multiple intelligence theory states that there are eight different types of intelligences. These include visual, spatial, bodily, kinesthetic, musical, interpersonal, intrapersonal, linguistic, logical, mathematical, and naturalistic. Teachers should incorporate a variety of different learning styles to optimize students' performance. Connor, can you tell these days of the week for me, please? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Austin, can you come up and show us the days of the week? Can you pick out Wednesday on the calendar? Very good. What day is today? Wednesday the what? Can you pick up the number? Wednesday. Friday. Friday. Saturday. Good job. Today is Wednesday. There are seven <laughs> days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. From the simplest of tasks to the most complex of situations, information processing is present and shapes how we function in society. So now, I wonder, how much of this video have you retained? And how much will be forever forgotten? <laughs>